Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is theCUBE's exclusive coverage here in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of SiliconANGLE Media's theCUBE. This is our flagship product. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. My next guest is Christian Ferry, who's with Blockstar doing investments, ICO advisor. He's been in the space. Great to see you, nice to meet you. Absolutely, thanks, thanks for having for, me, John. Thanks for joining. So, okay, some people are saying that we're at the top of the bubble. Some people are saying it's the beginning of, the, of a revolution. Some people are like staying away. Oh my God, what's going on? Um, you know, someone who's investing both in equity and token deals. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What's your take on this? I mean, how do you explain this? It's, it is a global phenomenon. I mean, mm -hmm. what's your take? Yeah, I think um, uh, we're the very early beginning right now. It's definitely, uh, I would say, 1996, yeah. 97 of the uh, internet bubble, if you will. Uh, we're seeing some um, amazing growth, right? So uh, things are picking up real fast, I think. You know, the moment that Bitcoin hits $10,000, a lot of people get interested in yeah. uh, all this phenomenon. Um, ICOs are becoming the standard, you know, for fundraising for startups. Uh, it's an interesting model, you know. Uh, you don't have to give up any equity. You don't have to give up any board seats. Yeah. Right, it's much leaner, much simpler. Uh, but there are definitely some, you know, legalities and, you know, regulatory aspects that, you know, put some concerns on a lot of, you know, people's mind. What are the, I mean, obviously, I mean, if you're an investor, you got to get a pound of flesh somewhere. The old days was equity, right? And then that was a long game, a little bit had a different gestation period. Mm -hmm. um, how are you making money now on the investments? Is it just getting in on the discounted tokens? Um, is there a little liquidity going on? So if there's no dilution, you got to make money somewhere. So where's the secret? Yeah, absolutely, great question. So I, I think you know if you're looking at security tokens, defined as an investment vehicles, um, you know the way you make money is by you know the value increases of the token, right? So as you buy at $1 and the token goes to 150, here you have your 50% you know, increase, right, return. Um, you know, there aren't new companies in the ICO space. Um, they're thinking about you know, leveraging the equity side of things, uh, but it's fairly new. Right now it's mainly a token deal. So when you think about you know, private sale, pre-sale, it's 99% a token uh, deal, right? Although equity is coming in because a lot of more venture capital is coming in and they're demanding a piece of the actions from a company and equity perspective. Yeah. And talk about the ICOs, because obviously we, you know, we've outlined this on theCUBE many times, blockchain, it's like a, I call it the crypto stack. Mm -hmm. Blockchain, cryptocurrency, and the application on the financial is ICO. Right. But that ICO also translates into the application dynamics of token economics, hence the value creation, right. hence what you're talking about, token value going up, mm -hmm. kind of like how equity investment would go up if it got sold on valuation, et cetera. Right. Okay, ICOs are hot. Now the market's pretty aware of the scams, mm -hmm. the scams out there. Mm -hmm. Young kid puts a fake white paper out there, raises 20 million, right. next thing you know, yeah. it's like, where's the money? I've heard that before. And then you got <laughs> legit ICOs going off the blocks that are really legit, doing great. How do you make sense of it? As an investor, is it classic word of mouth? Yeah. What kind of due diligence are you doing? Yeah. What's your filter? Uh, I, I think what you said, word of mouth definitely plays a big role in it, right? The trust network, your network. Um, you know, having a research team kind of helps understand the technology behind it, if it's actually feasible. Um, I, go, I go through 250 white papers a month. So you're a white desk. paper reader? Uh, I'm not. My, my research team overseas oh, actually okay. does, right? But as an investment and advisory firm, we have a lot of inflow of companies that want to get advised on or yeah. invested in. Um, and you know, a lot of these white papers are total moonshots. You know, it's like building YouTube when it's 1992. You have a dial-up. You can't yeah. do that. You yeah. need a broadband, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so you have to have a very good due diligence process yeah. and team that does that. Um, and then think about 99% of the white paper you'll see uh, are going to be crap or junk. Only one, two percent are going to be good. Uh, so that selection process is, is, is very key. On top of that, there are few things in the tokenization process that can raise red flags. For example, um, if they're too aggressive on the discounts of the private sale, like 70% discount, 80% discount, it's not a good indication, it's a red flag. Really, why not? 
uh, it, it shows that the product is not that great, right? If you have to kind of give somebody an 80%, if you're buying a Ferrari that it's discounted at 80%, yeah. would you buy it? Or would you say, well, I'm not sure, Well, you right? could be, it's like giving warrant coverage on an equity deal. I mean, you could you go could. to someone and say, hey, I'm going to give you 80% discount mm -hmm. because I want you in my deal and I want you to make more money than the other guys. And what we see, I mean, yeah. that's the counter argument. Yeah, and what we so see. So there's two, th I guess what you're saying is yeah. there's two vehicles. Desperation, yep. I got to discount the shit out of it Soundly. to get traction. Yep. And what I'm saying is, it's kind of like a hot deal, and you want the right people in. I've seen both. Y Have usually, you? Yeah, it's a good point. Usually what we've seen in the, his, you know, the past four, four and a half years is that the good deals, they don't get scanned more than 35%. That's usually the, the max that get scanned. Um, and it's especially just because you said you need strategic partners to back you up, to help yep. you out since the beginning. These people should be investing in the project. They should be, it should not be incentivized by the discount that you're giving That's them on a, a private point. sale. Yeah. But it should be incentivized because they believe in you and they believe so in the a, project. So it's a judgment call. Yeah. You shouldn't have to drop your drawers, you so it. to speak. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> good, good feedback. That's yeah. great. Okay, now token sale um, economics. Uh, I'm mm -hmm. the entrepreneur. How should I be thinking about going to you and I have a good deal, mm -hmm. I have a great product, I got token economics, I'm a growing company. This is an opportunity for me to scale my business at an unprecedented level. Mm -hmm. I can get more capital than I can on the, the private market because mm -hmm. it's flowing faster here. What do I got to do to get your attention? Uh, well, so first of all, uh, uh, from an advisory perspective, um, we only take usually established companies. Yeah. They have a, 10 million, um, a minimum of 10 million in ARR, so annual recurring revenue. Um, we make a few exceptions. Uh, if there's a very strong team, very strong advisory board, or they have some few characteristics and qualities we look for, we're kind of trying to kind of waive that 10 million ARR. But we're looking for like stellar team, rock, you know, rock star teams with good advisory board, with, with technologies that's actually feasible to be built in the next two, three years, and that can actually be deployed um, on the market. So they want to see product. You absolutely. gotta see product. Absolutely. So you don't invest in kind of the, the, the moonshot, as you said. No, Not I mean, really, I mean, because it's essentially a seed deal. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are, there are circumstances where you have a very, and a very amazing team, right? They've done yeah. some crazy, amazing things in the past, and they're talking about moonshots, right? They're, they're you know, I'm not gonna say a name, but there's a big ICO right now that is, yeah. you know, raising billions of dollars. Telegram. Right, well, I, I'm not gonna <laughs> say that. <laughs> Telegram. But, but, are you, you in know, Telegram? Yeah, well, you know, Sorry? Are you in Telegram? Um, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a user, right? Uh, not I have, a buyer of the ICO. I have not invested. Okay. I have a lot of people that want to invest in that ICO, but you know, I personally, you know, have different opinions on it. But you know, there's a lot of moon, show, moon, moon shooting over there, right? Yeah. So you know, we just want to make sure there's a fine balance between what you're promising, you know, and what you can actually do. Great. All right. So, what's your advice, to entrepreneurs, now? Okay, when they when they're at the stage of, you know, I really want to do a token sale. I think we're ready. What What's your advisory role? How do you come in and help? They might not be ready for capital, but they might want some advisor, maybe throw a little bit of token cash, not token cash in there, but <laughs> legit cash, um, via tokens. Absolutely. Um, how do you engage? What's your, I mean, you mentioned some of the 10 million, but what do you bring to the table? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So the way it works usually is that they come in with a white paper, an idea, or an established business they want to tokenize. And then we basically have a conversation, we start having a conversation, figure out what they want to do. Uh, but you know, the first advice that I give my clients is to stop. This, this business has too much FOMO in it, yeah. right? Fear of missing out. Um, so not just because everybody's out there doing an SEO, you should be doing an SEO, right? Yeah. So this is the first thing, you take a step back, figure out what really makes sense for you and your situations, your company. Um, and number two, I always provide the example where, think of, a, think of going SEO in a, in a three-step process, right? You start with the business, yep. right? So back in the 90s, and I think you were around back then, yeah, right? Yeah, I was. When we were asking somebody, you would say, what are you doing? It was like, oh, I'm doing a startup, I'm building a company, I'm building a startup, right? Yep. Everybody was talking about startups and startups. Startup. You know, you, you just in Palo Alto, anywhere in the world, talking about blockchain, you stop somebody in the street and say, what are you doing? An ICO, <laughs> right? Everyone's doing Everybody's it. Everybody's doing it, right? <laughs> so, but, but, but ICO is an investment vehicle, not a company, right? Yeah. So start with the business, get the business yeah. mechanics down right. So free cash flow, unique value proposition, product market fit. Once you've done the business, think about the token model, yeah. right? The token model has to go in hand in hand with your business model and revenue model, right? And don't settle for the first one or two that come to mind. There are over 50 business, I'm actually writing a book about it, the first ICO playbook coming out later, today, later nice. this year. Okay, great. It's going to have a bunch of uh, new token models in it. And once you figure out the business and token models, now it's time to think about compliance. And now, you know, compliance can actually enable the rest and what are the right jurisdictions 
they're a, a, a match for the token and the business model. All right, so the token playbook, great job. I'm glad you're writing that book. I, yeah. I think I, I, we need to get a good playbook down. Yeah. Right, so here's a playbook question for you. We're going to go to the playbook on this one. Um, security token or utility token? Okay, we kind of got that figured out. Mm -hmm. Got to have utility. I'm going to raise money in the U.S. and abroad. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've decided to go with the security token, mm -hmm. hypothetical mm -hmm. instance. Yep, absolutely. What do I do? Yeah, security to equity, security for future cash flows, future for dividend. What is the playbook for the security token? Well, so it, it's, 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 it's more simple than it sounds in a sense, right? So the first thing is just, if you're not sure, whether it's a utility or security, just file it as a security, right? Um, and from a security standpoint, I think you're covered, right? Whether or not you're selling to the US but you're a US resident citizen, you still have to comply with the SEC regulations just because you're in the US, right? Um, and so a security can actually have different terms, just like you said, a security to equity, a security to and so forth. Um, that depends on what you know, your revenue model is and what your structure of the company is, right? So a lot of people are doing security equity, right? Other are doing security token just because you know, they don't want to give up the equity of the company or the board seats. So what's the biggest um, thing that you're scared of in this market as an investor? You worried about regulatory? You worry about too many deals? Chase, or too much money chasing not enough good deals? What's, uh, what's your fear? Yeah. So um, one of the initiatives that started last year is called the Blockchain Compliance Alliance. So it's a no-profit um, independent initiative to develop a standard for ICOs. Um, and so by doing that... You started that? <clears throat> yeah, I founded it last year um, okay. with a few other folks. And then it's, we have five Just or six people. try to build people. some stability around the process. You got it, yeah. It's almost like a self-regulating standard, an SRO, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and we had the opportunity to engage with some regulators, some of the folks at the SEC and some other government agencies, not just in the US, but also uh, in Europe. Um, and they're very open, very, very, very open to, to kind of have a, a self-regulating standard. Yeah, we need self-regulation. Yeah. The community's got to take care of business. Yeah. There's a lot of scams out there. Absolutely, and, and so they're open to say, to have an industry that's self-regulated instead of being you know, regulated from the top down, right? They kind of choke innovations, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm not really concerned about too much regulations coming in from the regulators. Well, the SEC if, has just been signaling. I mean, they've taken a few obvious scammers down, right. but they really haven't overreached, in my opinion. I think mm -hmm. the signaling has been good. Um, but they're signaling. They're, they're signaling. Not took a look in the other way. Uh, absolutely, and I think there's, is there a job? Is there for a job? Yeah. Right? They, they have to be signaling that. But then, that, they, then they don't know what they're talking about either. So yeah. the community's got to step up to your point. Correct. Right. So yeah. we're trying to kind of be that basically that intermediary, if you will, right? Not yeah. a blockchain term. But how many know, people are involved in that? Just take a quick minute to explain. URLs or like a website? Uh, yeah, we do. It's blockchaincompliancealliance.org. And who's involved in that real uh, quick? There are five or six people we're getting on, uh, volunteers, pretty much, right? It's a, okay. it's a no-profit, right? So volunteers, we're looking for additional volunteers, donations, um, and a board of advisory. We have a few high-level, uh, you know, uh, high-level advisors. Whales, or, whales. Yeah, well, <laughs> They're called like, whales. Yeah. Uh, are they, are level, they whales? Yeah, enthusiasts. Well, uh, whales are, billionaires? <laughs> whales don't want to be known. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> to find the whales. But they say that we have a few high-level, you know, advisors that would like to come on board. Yeah. Uh, we're going to make the announcement Us minnows, soon. Uh, yeah. out there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be exciting, yep. That's awesome. Okay, now back to the token economics. I'm fascinated by the token economics. Again, you can't just whitewash a business and saying, hey, I'm tokenizing now. There really has to be a dynamic. What do you look for? What do you observe? And what's your thoughts on how to actually think about the token economics alignment with the business model? Where does that have to line up for you? Yeah, good question. I think that there are different aspects of it, right? Um, you know, first of all, you need to define what a token is, right? Is there for you an incentive mechanism? Uh, in which case, you know, you can use an airdrop model. You know, you don't necessarily have to ask people for money. Or it's a fundraising mechanism, or both, right? Mm -hmm. So once you start with these basic questions, yeah. you can think of it, you can move on to say, who's going to be my user, right? Who's going to use this token, right? Uh, think about, uh, you know, are it going to be moms, dads, hospitals? Like, what's my target? And then how are they going to use it? And are they going to hold it? Are they going to sell it? Are they going to trade it? So all these different things mm -hmm. define the token model, right? And the token model, as we said, needs to go hand in hand with the business model and the revenue model as well, right? Uh, so for example, 
a lot of companies are using the token as a fundraising mechanism, but an incentive mechanism as well, to incentivize yep. and incentivize best behavior. So talk about the dynamics of an airdrop and a token swap. Mm -hmm. We're starting to see airdrops are well known. Just take mm -hmm. a minute to explain to the folks who don't know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll get to the um, token swapping. We're seeing some Absolutely. synergistic karitsus forming. So airdrops and then token swaps. Yeah, airdrops are becoming basically the new standard, I would say. Um, they're in a way Outside to get the US? Uh, even the US, actually. Doing in the US, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a company Explain called, I think it's called earn.com, where you can actually launch your airdrop campaign uh, for free or you have to pay something. But What's the URL? Earn.com. Earn earn.com, yeah, okay, e yeah, I've seen that. R -N, yeah. Explain uh, what an airdrop is, just define it. Uh, so it's, it's a very simple, you know, terms, you basically airdrop token, you basically give tokens to, to, to users, to people, right? So basically people sign up on your site with, and you whitelist an address, and then you basically send those tokens to that address, right? So it's a way to circumvent a public sale, if you So will. get free tokens out. Yeah. To generate community activity, marketing buzz. Correct, correct. So you just kind of airdrop it, kind of right. metaphorically. Right. You know, there are some ways that you know people do private sales with airdropping. Where's the sense. gotchas on the airdrops? Where are people getting in trouble? Um, well, if, if, you're, if the token is a security, right? I mean, it depends on, you know, if you're giving the token for free, but the, the, the value increases in, you know, the token increases in value, that, that delta, um, it, it becomes dubious, right? Is that, you know, it, from an IRS perspective, from an SEC perspective, from a CFTC perspective, right? So that yeah, yeah. we haven't still figured out. But you know, ideally, if you give out free token to incentivize the community, yeah, and that's normal um, marketing that, that usage. Be, you got and the it. SEC views that as a utility, a, a, a legit utility. Yeah, we've seen that with Wyoming with a new uh, bill that passed uh, in the past couple of yeah. days, right? That that's how they define utility tokens. Cool. All right, now let's talk about swaps, token swaps, because mm -hmm. we're starting to see some activity around uh, self-forming, which is natural in communities, mm -hmm. adjacent businesses saying, "Hey, I'll swap." You know, two million dollars worth of tokens for two million of mine. Right. You know, it's a kind of a Barney deal. You love me, I love you back yeah. kind of thing. But it's trying to cross pollinate communities and share value. Basically, it's a biz dev deal. Yeah, absolutely. What and do you it, think about that? Uh, it's great. I think I've seen that a lot of that um, informing new partnerships between ICOs, right? So let's say there are two ICOs that you know they definitely want to somehow JV or partner together. They have some qualities they would like to kind of uh, um, you know have of each other. And that's how they do it. They do a token swap. It's almost like an equity swap from a from a regular yeah. traditional company standpoint, right? It's almost like they want to have a, an action in the company. Uh, and I think it's a great model. It's a great yeah. incentive mechanism. Uh, great uh, legal bill too on all this. I mean, someone's going to pay for it. Lawyers are having some fun with it. Yeah. Kind of new progressive uh, laws being figured out. Lawyers are generating new documents for the first mm -hmm. time. Um, final question for you. I know you got to run. Appreciate mm -hmm. your time sure. spending with us. Uh, Puerto Rico, your observation here, obviously you're from the Bay Area like we are. Um, what are you doing here? Why are you here? What's your observation? What's the hallway conversation? Share some color commentary yeah. about uh, blockchain yeah. uh, Unbound. So I'll start with why I'm here. Um, so it's a beautiful place. It's just like the weather is amazing, the water is amazing. <laughs> it's a great place to kind of take some time off. Speaking of a bunch of conferences and meeting a few people, um, and I'm part of the movement, of the Puerto Rico crypto movement. Um, I think it's great. I had an opportunity to meet with some of the government uh, officials that came here at uh, Blockchain and Bound today and talk a little bit about what's happening, how can we actually make sure that we'll, we'll, we'll create some sort of ecosystem that is done, is made for ICOs and blockchain. And what I like about it is they're very open to accept new ideas, very open yeah. to try out and to try new things, right? Which not always happens in the government space. Yeah. So I'm very excited by the and potential. they're really active, the open arms. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I, I have very high expectations and you know, very, yeah. very, very good sense that you know, things are going to pan out here. You do any Rico. deals here, writing checks, signing commitments, verbal MOUs, handshakes, uh, what's happening? There's been some of that. Um, of course, you know, I'm a big believer that you, know, you need to do enough due diligence in the process, right? So you know, kind of have a cool off period, right? A honeymoon yeah. period, kind of cool off. Yeah. But I think you know, there's, there's very, like, you know, very interesting people here. I met some very interesting brains, very interesting projects. Um, and the energy, you can feel the energy. You know, people yeah. want to try their yeah. risk. I've seen a lot invest. of people doing deals. I yeah. saw one VC, I'm sorry, VC, investor, mm -hmm. token investor. He's done six deals already here. Yeah. He's, um, you know, buying tokens, mm -hmm. you know, handshake, verbal commitments, and uh, MOUs. Yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Uh, and a lot of money coming in, a lot of international too. Absolutely. So great yeah. to see, not just here in Puerto Rico, right. not just US, this is a global phenomenon. It is, very much. This is one of the things that blockchain is like, you know, is about. Yeah. It's ubiquitous, it's everywhere. 
Uh, that's the beauty of it, right? Yeah. So, that well, Christian, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it. Thanks for sharing your, the data and advice. The blockchain playbook is coming out at the end of the year. Check it out, Christian Ferry with Blockstar. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE, SiliconANGLE Media. Live coverage here, wall to wall, two days. Back with more after this short break. Thank <laughs> you.